Cairo, Seattle. It's time to get schooled with a professor, John Clayton. Welcome to Schooled with a Professor. We are pleased to be joined by Ryan Leaf on what's a very important week in Washington, Washington state of Washington sports, the, the Apple Cup this week, and of course, a lot of great reflections. And Ryan, I mean, as you look back on your career, I mean, what was the Apple Cup like for you and your teammates? Well, it, it kind of defined um, my time at Washington State. My first start ever in college was at Husky Stadium against Washington, and my final start in college of you know other than the last game in the Rose Bowl but my final start was of course in Husky Stadium uh, against Washington in fact that game was for the opportunity to win the Pac-12 uh, Pac-10 at the time and and go to the Rose Bowl so uh, very similar to this year 20 years later um, Washington State has an opportunity to win the the first part of this and win the Pac, Pac-12 North title and, and go on to the Pac-12 championship and possibly get that opportunity to go to the Rose Bowl again. So in a lot of ways, when you go back to, uh, you know, 95 to nine, or 2000, uh, 2000, 1995 to 97, and you start to look through that, and it's like, I mean, your plate was similar to what Luke Falk has gone through in trying to build up to a point where you can win the Apple Cup and then have the success of going on in the Pac-10, Pac-12, and all that stuff. What was that like from the very first start and the build up to get to the point where you win in 1997 and get that championship? Well, I think it was the epitome of you know of, of working together as a team. Um, that '95 team, we we walked in there at uh, at three and seven, and weren't even given a chance. And it was my first start, and somehow we found a way to make it thirty to thirty um, right at the end of the game. And they kicked a field goal to beat us thirty three to thirty, and that that started it. Um, you know, we 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 struggled a bit the next year down the stretch and didn't get into a bowl game. And I think that just, I think that emboldened us uh, to be better, to work harder in the summer. And, uh, and then we got, we always had that chip on our shoulder, right? The, the, the pundits and critics picked us to finish seventh in the PAC 10 in that 97 season. And we opened up with UCLA and USC to start the year. So it was going to either be a successful year or a, a struggle if we weren't able to get through those two games. And sure enough, we went on a run and did something that hadn't been done there since 1931. And, and it, you know, I got a lot of the credit, um, as did coach price, but you know, football is the ultimate team game. And that was an amazing football team from top to bottom, from the offensive line, the defensive line to the back end of that defense. Um, and especially because of my running back and receiving core, um, we were just, we were a special unit and we've been together for a long time. How, how important is it to have a great quarterback in this series? Well, I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily that important uh, if if the team is I mean, the the thing about this football team at Washington State this year, it it's it is a team, right? It's just not Luke Folk. He gets a lot of the credit, but don't forget, you know, Mike Leach does ha- has no qualms about just, you know, pulling the all-time leading passer in Pac-12 history. Just pull him out of a game if he's not seen the field like he wants to see him. So, Coach Leach feels like he's coached up his guys well enough that the next man up attitude works there. And because of the way that defense is playing this year, getting pressure on the quarterback, getting turnovers, that is the big reason why they're at, why they're there right now. Yeah. And I guess that's the, the most interesting thing of what Mike has been able to do over the last couple of years. And I'm sure there's some parallels as far as the three year run that uh, you had in getting ready for the Apple cup. Uh, the, the ultimate win in the Apple cup was the fact that last year, all of a sudden out of a blue, the Cougars ran the ball, and you think, okay, air raid offense. I mean, they're not going to even hand it off. It's all going to be throw, 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 throw. But they actually developed a running game last year. They, in, they carried it over this year, and then you're right. The defense really came on. Yeah, it's important. I mean, that was what made us so good is we were so balanced. You know, people forget that we rushed for 220 yards a game um, plus the 330 yards passing a game. So we were 550 yard a game offense and uh, we were balanced defenses did not know what we were going to do if they loaded up on the run of course we'd throw right over the top of them and if they back into a soft shell um, our running back michael black would just gut them and it's a little it's less of that at washington state now there's still the air raid offense right they're still going to throw it more often than not but when the numbers line up 
and they show that teams are allowing for that five-man box. Um, Luke does a great job of getting them into a running play that gives them the biggest success. They also follow with essentially, you know, like 40% or 50% of their passes are either behind the line of scrimmage or within like five yards of the line of scrimmage. So those are just, you know, extensions of runs. They maybe look like large tosses, wide tosses, but um, the running game in sense uh, of the air raid is makes like is Mike Leach's, you know, point of point of reference on all this. He he wants to control the ball, um, control the the tempo, the time of possession if you can, and it's because of that those extended runs I would say. Um, that make them so successful. I know it's 20 years, and first off, it's hard to believe it's 20 years. That's really you I know. Know, <laughs> zip by. It's like, wow, how how time does fly. But describe the difference between the Mike Price offense that you ran versus the Mike Leak, uh, Leach offense that Luke Falk runs. Well, the air raid offense is um, predicated on, you know, moving backwards, right? So it's uh, quarterbacks in the shotgun, offensive linemen are always pass setting. Um, the physical nature of them moving forward or knocking guys off the ball isn't isn't you know in tune with what they do. So the biggest difference for us is when there was third and one or fourth and one late in ball games, we were physical enough. I feel like to to push people off the line of scrimmage, where it's difficult when you've been going backwards all game to be asked to impose your will and go forward. So I think that's the biggest difference. Also with us, um, you know, the offense of course was just, I won't say more complicated. It just, there was more plays. I mean, in the air raid offense, there's really only 10 passing plays, uh, but there's five different options off of every one of those passing plays. And there are times where Mike Leach will run the same play, you know, two or three times in a row. And Luke Folk will hit a different receiver every single time because he'll take what the defense dictates. You're not really reading coverage so much. You're just kind of seeing if it's too high or one high and throwing off of that. And that's probably the biggest difference from what Coach Price's more pro-style offense was. If you were in the air raid offense, how do you think you'd do? <laughs> well, I, I'd be a really happy camper, right? I, I would mean, imagine. Throwing the football, you know, possibly 80 times in a game. I can't imagine what uh, what those stats would look like. But I'm all, you know, I, I sometimes look at it and I'm, I'm proud, of course, because what Coach Leach has done and brought the, brought the team and the university back to um, relevancy nationally. Uh, sometimes I just kind of look at it and go, you know, it's kind of a freak show thing, right? You're just, hey, everybody, come watch us throw it 90 times. Um, where, in fact, during our time, it just it felt like more football. But this is how, you know, football adapting this is how it's evolving it's becoming more of a you know air show as you see a ton of records and stats and and, and the same way in the nfl right i mean there's over the last 15 years there's been more records broken passing wise on at both levels because you're just doing so much more of it that's all and that's evolving it it would have been different of course my arm may have gotten a lot sore <laughs> it's kind of thrown a lot more but uh I, I'm, I'm really happy of the offense i played in uh, under coach ice um, but I'm also really proud of what Coach Leach and, and that Washington State offense has done. Can you kind of give a scouting report of Luke Falk as a quarterback? Um, I'd say amazing leader, adequate arm, very intelligent, um, reading defenses. You know, I, I, I would probably say, you know, he's a system quarterback, which isn't a derogatory term. I think they're, you know, Tom Brady's a system quarterback, and he's the best that's ever played pretty much. So, you know, I, I, I'd say that. I mean, he fits the mold of a lot of Mike Leach quarterbacks, all the way down to Cliff Kingsbury, to Graham Harrell, to Connor Holliday um, before Luke. And uh, he does what's asked of him. But also, you know, if he's not seeing the field and not doing what Coach Leach, Leach is asking of him, he, he, he doesn't have a problem sitting him down, which – for me, that would have been problematic in my day, right? Well, the, yeah, that would that Pac-12, would not have gone over very well. Right, the Pac-12 all-time leader in passing yards and touchdowns, and and coach saying, "Hey, you're, you're just not good enough. Uh, we're going to go with our backup." And that's that would have been difficult to handle. I really give him credit for that, and I really give the team credit for not letting it fracture that locker room after that Arizona loss because they bounced back and beat Stanford and Utah in back-to-back weeks, which 
I, you know, I thought was pretty impressive after that. They, they, they can compartmentalize in that locker room, and they do a heck of a job. That's why I think they have the best chance they've had in many, many years of going over to Seattle and winning this weekend. I'd venture to say that Luke is a, as tough of a quarterback as you can have because, I mean, I would have to say that he took more hits than you took because he does take a lot of hits. Well, maybe. I mean, it's also he, he's probably he probably was a lot a lot more fragile than I was. And when I took the hits, the guys bounced off me. Uh, when, when he takes them, he goes down pretty hard. So that just happens because when you're when you're when you're I guess eat a lot more pizza while you're in college. You're uh, you're about 255 pounds. Those uh, those shots don't don't affect you as much. But I I agree with you. He's hit he's hit quite a lot for an offensive line that's supposed to be regarded as really really good. And sometimes only having three man rushes, um, they, they get to the quarterback quite a bit. And uh, and he has to he has to stand in it. The cool thing about what Luke does is that nothing phases him. Right? There could be a blitz. There could be a, a guy coming from the safety position and getting to him. And he'll stand in there and throw it. And that's that right there for me is the the, the show of toughness. His ability to not wince or or flinch at the sight of anybody coming after him. That was that that's pretty special about Luke Falk. Okay. Now on the other side, uh, how do you look at this Washington team? Well, I, I think they've underachieved, right? I mean, after you get into the Final Four last year, you'd think that uh, they did lose a lot of guys to the NFL, mostly a you know big time wide receiver. Uh, to stretch the field and but uh defensively they've been down a bit too um even though they were highly uh highly ranked uh defense for most of the year that game down at stanford kind of uh you know showed them a little bit and then to follow it up with a uh, but what i what i really respected from from washington this last week was to learn i know they learned that stanford had won mid-game they knew that they could not win the north now so really the game's would be meaningless, um, but they found a way to fight. And that's what a Chris Peterson led football team looks like. They fought and the energy of when they won that football game, the excitement that happened and sued afterwards was neat to say, neat to see about college football. And which makes me think that they're not going to lie down this weekend. You know, they're going to, I know coach Peterson's probably in the locker room all week saying, you know, you can be the spoiler. You can, you can do something here to ruin your rival season. And it's usually the other way around. It's usually Washington State trying to spoil Washington's season, their chance to go to the Rose Bowl and things like that. So things have kind of kind of turned, and uh, and I'm sure that's the way he's uh, approaching it um, to say, hey, you know, we have a chance to go uh, ten and two, have another ten win season, and uh, knock our cross cross state rivals out of the chance to go to the Rose Bowl. So. That's the way I think he's approaching it this week. How, how similar do you think uh, Chris Peterson is to Don James? Well, I mean, Coach James was a little before my time, but but you knew his stamp on the uh, program from how you heard his players talk, right? And that's a similarity that I hear uh, from his players right now. His ability to say this is going to be this is going to be the who our player is here. I'm willing to get rid of. Somebody who's probably our best player, if he's not, if he doesn't walk the company, you know, doesn't tow the company line. And people have bought into it. Um, they've had two successful seasons, though. I think, you know, I think there's a disappointment, of course, this year because they're they're out of the North title hunt. But uh, um, very similar in the fact that I think he, his players uh, will go the ends of earth, ends of the earth for him. Yeah, and of course, I mean, uh, he, he's not real big in the media sense. I mean, he's not loving the interviews, but boy, can this guy really coach. I mean, it seems that he gets the focus, and you have to do it his way, but his way usually works. Yeah, uh, you know, I think he just, you know, he's just not, in his eyes, he's like, I'm I'm here to coach and, and help these young men be better young men. Um, you know, I'm not here to put on an entertainment show. Where Mike Leach is, he's kind of conformed to that. This is... This is his his shtick a little bit, and it endears him to our fan base because we're a bit of you know we, we we're the underdog in Pullman, and we've always felt that way, and we've kind of got a you know a fearless pirate of a leader right now who uh, who can discuss Dostoevsky or or <laughs> or uh, throwing the shovel pass in a in a press conference. I mean, I I think that's very appealing to the media, 
where Chris Peterson just says, I want to talk about cover two and how, how great my defensive line is doing in their chemistry classes right now or something like that. I think that's, that's the, the, the format he's taken. If the Cougars win, they go against USC, Sam Darnold. Uh, you're down in Los Angeles. Uh, how good is USC and how good is Sam Darnold? Well, they're, they're very good. I think they're the best Pac-12 football team. Um, but I, I don't know if that's saying that much because we're most likely going to be the lone, cro- lone conference left out of the mix in the uh, college football playoff this year. Um, I think uh, a Washington State rematch would be difficult for them, but one that now that they're more healthy than they were when they went up to Pullman at the end of September would have the upper hand and most likely would be the favorite on a neutral site. Uh, As for if they were to play Stanford, I think that um, the ability of Bryce Love to run the football and for them to control it may make it more difficult um, but I, I just think I think USC is the better football team right now um, in the Pac-12. They're the best Pac-12 team, um, but not good enough to uh, be included in the college football playoff, clearly. I'm kind of still wondering if Sam Darnold's going to turn pro this year. I, I still have reservations. I mean, obviously, talent-wise, he can do it. He'll probably be the first pick in the draft, <laughs> unless it's the Cleveland Browns, and he may decide to stay in there But because uh, uh, the Cleveland Browns aren't very good. But uh, how good is Sam, and what do you think he will do? And if he does turn pro this year, how good can he be? Well, I mean, you, you never know. I think he's a great college quarterback, and uh... – He's had his struggles this year. You know, he's, he leads the nation in turnovers. And as a quarterback, that, as I know in the pros, you cannot turn the football over. That's the best way to lose football games in the NFL is to turn the football over. And he's kind of been a turnover machine. Though he's been better the last five games, um, he has thrown some bad interceptions and then been careless with the ball while, while fumbling. My hope is that he'll stay, but I'm, that's always my you know, the way I look at it. And it's probably because I'm a bit biased because I wish I would have stayed. Um, he's, his talent is good enough, of course, but most likely if he goes anywhere, he'll probably sit and learn. So, you know, it, it, for me, playing in the Pac-12, you're going to get a lot of experience. You're probably going to be on a very good football team, and they may have a chance to, you know, play for the national championship, and he'd be in the top of the Heisman contention, like everybody had assumed this year. Um, it's a personal choice. It's one that he's going to have to sit down and talk with his family, his coaches, and, and, and see because, you know, this is going to be a quarterback drought in the NFL the next year. People are going to be looking for one. Um, they're probably willing to move up and do a lot, as we saw last year, to move up all those spaces like the Kansas City Chiefs did to pick up Patrick Mahomes. So um, I, I'd like to see him stay, um, though I, I, I suspect um, – not all, all not all quarterbacks could be like Peyton Manning and actually come back for their senior year. And, and though this would only be Sam's junior year, redshirt junior year, um, I, I suspect him to, to go and, and be a professional quarterback and, you know, struggle like most rookies do. <laughs> yeah, but... uh, That's just the way it goes, uh, unless, of course, they're on a team. But when you are drafted so highly, you're probably drafted by a team that was pretty poor the year before, and that's going to usually be a struggle. Yeah, although I guess there is some hope that he might stay because I know that he takes the advice of Carson Palmer. He takes the advice of Peyton Manning. He's done that now for a long period of time, and I know both will be advising him to stay in. I was curious. You, you mentioned that uh, you you might have wished that you would have stayed that extra year. How different would have things been had you not turned pro as you did? And wait. Well, I don't know if things would have been that different. I you know I was always the uh, now that I can look back and take accountability for. It, I I was always the problem. I had to, but maybe having that that last year where we were going to struggle because we lost 28 seniors and we may have been a team that had to fight uh, to get to six and five and get to a bowl game um, may have been good for me to deal with some failure on a national level. Um, maybe some of those behaviors would have got found out earlier and could have been corrected uh, more in a Hamlet like, like Pullman than rather on the, the big bright light stage of, of the NFL. So I also am upset, of course, because I actually gave away, um, you know, my my four years at Washington State were, or three and a half years at Washington State were the best of my life. And the idea that I actually gave uh, one of those away um, is disappointing for me because it was, it was, it was my favorite time uh, in those early twenties uh, to be in Pullman, to be the starting quarterback and be the representative of Washington State University and to actually have given one of those years away um, though chasing my dream, 
um, now in retrospect, of course, is, is something I wish I would have done different. Now, I know your family life is good. Are you still helping a lot of people uh, with some of the things that you do? Well, we're trying. You know, we're, we're on a daily basis trying to do more. Um, for me, it's whether it's with Transcend Recovery Community or um, with my foundation, Focus Intensity Foundation, where we raise money for scholarships for people who can't afford substance abuse and mental health treatment. I mean, that's those are what we're doing. I'm also dabbling in, uh, you know, some college football analysis, working for Fox and Sirius XM. So, you know, I, I'm busy and I feel fulfilled and I feel valued and I have a, an amazing, you know, partner and my, my fiance here. And we just had a baby, uh, a little baby boy. So, I mean, it's a full life. I think that's the, the best way to put it in its life. So it's difficult at times and it always will be, um, but it's full and, and it's peaceful. And that's what I've always strive for and I think I've found it it's because I do I, I, I do this this program on a daily basis and try to just you know live a life on life's terms and and uh, you know that's what I continue to try to do every day and it's it's been working for the last six years for sure hey well, Ryan I wish you the best and uh, continued success and good luck in the Apple Cup yeah well, I appreciate it go kooks there you go and that does it for this week's podcast. In between episodes, you can follow me on Twitter at Clayton ESPN. If you enjoy these weekly one-on-one conversations, consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to the show. Thanks for listening. See you next time on Schooled with the Professor.